Let's go to the book of John, chapter 14. And we're going to read verses 1 and 2. En el libro de Juan, capítulo 14, el versículo 1 y 2. John chapter 14, verse 1, reads in verse 2. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. I go to prepare a place for you. The Lord speaking. I want to preach tonight on the title, Where Are You Going? Where are you going? Amen. We know where he went, but where are you going? Where am I going? Heavenly Father, we pray today for this word. I pray that you give us knowledge today. Let us connect the dots in our minds and in our hearts. Let us understand the day of Pentecost, just a little bit better today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I feel the Holy Ghost in the house. Amen. I just, from the day, from the moment the service started this afternoon, I just, I just felt the Holy Ghost in the house. And, and it's not because we've been praying, although we have been praying. Lord, let us feel your presence. We are Pentecostals. You know what happens in a Pentecostal service? The Lord begins to move. A lot of a lot of pastors, and it happened in Gainesville uh, this morning. A lot of times, Pentecostals have, uh, pastors have a message, and they're almost on edge because if people keep on singing, if they sing it just one more time, somebody liable to take off running. Somebody might jump and shout, and it might get out of hand, and the pastor might not get to preach. <laughs> but anyway, we we want God to have His way. And God has allowed me to step to this pulpit tonight. So I'm going to do my very best to preach what I feel like God wants me to preach. Where are you going? My grandson here asked me if I would sign a form for him to go to camp. And I don't know if he looked at the envelope where I put the, the form, but on the outside of, of the envelope, I put on there, where are you going? So I don't know if he thought Pastor Rios was losing his mind or what, because you just signed a form for me to go to camp. Where do you think I'm going? But what I was giving to him was the title of the message for tonight, where I know we got to go to camp. I know they got to go to school when school starts. I know we got to go to work. There's a lot of places, but eventually, where are you really headed? Where are you going? Where am I going? This world we know, we understand by science and the signs that we see all around that agree with the scientists and those that study the movements of the stars and the earth. We understand that the world is spinning. What we think the sun is setting is really not the sun going anywhere. The sun is just standing there. It's the earth that is spinning. And, and we'll see the sun and then it looks like the sun is going down, but we're really... We're the ones that are turning. And then the moon starts showing up day after day after day. The world is turning this way. Right. Now, I would begin to believe that an explosion took place and evolution is really what it's all about. But there's no way. Right. Because the earth, not only is it spinning this way, it's also got a little wobble to it. Usually when there's an explosion, everything just goes in, in different directions, right? But all the planets and all the earth and all the other planets and the sun and the moon and the things are just the way God put them. And it's the earth. If you notice early in the morning, there used to be a star. It looked like it was over there early in the morning, about four or five o'clock in the morning. We'd get up from prayer and we'd go to Lozano's for breakfast. And on the way to Lozano's, I would see the star that was over there. Now it's over here. Did the star move? No, the star didn't move. Is that the earth is wobbling. It's turning not just directly like, uh, like you would think, just in the same direction. That's why we have winter and then spring and, 
and then summer we get closer to the sun and the things happen and it has to happen just the right way for the rains to come. How many of you enjoyed the rains that we had in the past couple of days? I'm glad it wasn't a major hurricane, but we needed the rain. What's causing this rain is that the way God ordained for this world to just wobble so that we can have seasons, so we can have cool and we can have hot and, and we can have moisture and rain. And it's just so perfect and it's so beautiful. But not only is the, is the world turning like this, it's also got a little wobble to it. And not only that, but it's traveling through space. It's, it's going a lot faster than what we can real, even begin to imagine. The world and all the planets are, are traveling away from each other. Where are we going? Where is this earth headed? Well, if you don't know the word of God, well, I don't know. You know what the scientists think? That the universe is expanding and that pretty soon it's going to contract. The universe is breathing. But my Bible says, heaven and earth shall pass away. The world is headed towards the end of the earth. It's going to reach its end. It's going to culminate when God says it's going to culminate. It's going to come to an end. I know Ocasio-Cortez and Joe Biden and, and Chuck Schumer and these people, they, they're going to save the planet because we're going to stop driving cars that use petroleum. And we're going to stop the emissions and stuff. And we're going to start using batteries. What they're not telling you is to make the batteries, it's, it's causing a lot more pollution. Right. And the windmills that they set out there, oh, we're going to make electricity out of those. They freeze up in the winter and then there's a blackout where they, uh, all kinds of problems. You know why? Because we cannot save the planet. If God says heaven and earth is going to pass away, it's going to pass away. And it's going to be in his time. And we don't need to worry about it. I got news for those people. I am not going to worry about it. Because I've got a promise. I've got a promise it's called the Holy Ghost. Yes, amen. <laughs> the Holy Ghost is more than just speaking in tongues, saints of God. As I was beginning to think about the message in Spanish, I began to think when you get the Holy Ghost, a lot of it's a gift. First of all, it's a gift from God. And in this package that God has packaged for the church, there's all kinds of goodies in there. There's the law. We are celebrating today the day of Pentecost. And a lot of people don't understand where this day originated. If you were to just pick it up in the New Testament, it's the day that the Holy Ghost fell. And so a lot of people says, okay, well, that's when the Holy Ghost fell on the day of Pentecost. But what was the day of Pentecost? The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 2, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come. So why did we have the day of Pentecost already before even the Holy Ghost fell? Because the day of Pentecost was a celebration that the Jewish people had. They celebrated the day that God came down to Moses and gave him the Torah. It also coincided with the day of weeks, with a, with a feast of weeks. They would celebrate the harvest. They had two harvests. Saints of God, my, my, my brain is doing flip-flop because I'm beginning to connect the dots here. We had the latter rain, the former rain, and now we're having the latter rain. So those of you that understand what I'm saying, revival is coming like we have never, ever seen upon this earth. I mean, we, we worry about the transgenders and all oh, we get, oh man, they're going to, they're going to weird out the world. No, there's something more powerful than they have ever, they have never experienced the power of the Holy Ghost as it's going to, and it is already. How many times have you turned on Facebook and Brother Dagan is laying hands on somebody else? Somebody else is getting, well, what is it going to happen here, Pastor? I don't know when it's going to happen, but I'm not going to be dismayed. If my brother's having revival, if Gainesville is having revival, guess what? I have hope that revival is coming to Immokalee. 
so as I began to study a little bit, and I'm not a, I'm not a, a theologian by no means in the Old Testament or the New Testament, but I began to understand that that the, the Passover was the day that Israel was freed from slavery out of Egypt. The Lord said, kill the lamb, eat it all, take the blood and put it on the doorpost. On the doorpost and on the on the on the on the side, forming in a way the shape of a cross. Back then they didn't understand. You know what they were thinking? Oh, we're free to go. They packed up their bags. All the neighbors began to help them, giving them gold and silver. We're out of here. And they began a journey. If you were to ask the Israelites that day, where are you going? Where are you going? They weren't going to take a railroad track, that's for sure. But they were going somewhere. Where are we going? I don't know. The Lord is going to take us to a place. And, and so they began to march. And they walked and they walked and they got food. They got water. They came out of a rock. They Their shoes never wore out. They just kept on walking. Saints of God, the church needs to learn that our God is more than able to supply our needs according to his riches and glory. He's not going to leave us to go hungry. David said, I once was young and now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. I, I want to say, first of all, thank you for, for, for all of you that came out to our celebration on Memorial Day. That was phenomenal, phenomenal. We're a small church and and uh, but but I was just blown away because first of all, it was going to be my wife and my three grandchildren. We're going to have a little hot dog cookout over there in the back. I've got an old beat up grill back there. I got some wood and a little charcoal. We're going to we're going to have a good time. Sister Rios and me and the grandkids and my wife are going to ride the go cards in the back. And it was it's going to be kind of sad in a way because it's just a few of us. And but we'll make it make it work. And, and then Brother Angelo, I, I figured he was going to do something with his family, so we hadn't even talked about it at breakfast. Brother Angelo says, so, so what are we doing for Memorial Day? Memorial Day was just around the corner. And I'm like, well, we, we never made any plans. We knew we, was, we were going to have the grandkids. He said, well, uh, I said, you know, if you guys want to come and join, if you don't have nothing else to do, can you come and you, would you like to come and join us? You Sister uh, Carol and, and little Angelo. And he says, yeah, okay. And so we left it at that. Then Brother Angelo announced it from the pulpit. Say, anybody wants to come to Memorial Day, a celebration, you're welcome to come. And I said, okay. But probably people won't show up because it's like two more days or one more day. And uh, I don't know where the food's going to come from. We started buying. We started calling we start next thing you know we got a feast you're talking about a feast of pentecost we we had so much food we had uh, brother chavez donated ribs and, and hamburger patties that to die for i mean they were just delicious already cooked Every, i think the patties we had to cook but the ribs were already to go all we needed somebody to chew on them cakes and pies and cookies and drinks and i mean it was a feast a bunch of people, the Chavez boys showed up and they were the go card back there. I don't know if they really make TikToks back there. They said they were making some TikToks back there, writing the go cards that Brother Angelo flipped the go card and we thought he killed himself, but he was all right. I'm okay. I'm okay. You got we had a blast and I want to say thank you, church. You, you amaze me at how as small as we are, you, you, you're still so flexible and so willing to, hey, just let's just go with it. A lot of people would have been like, I can't believe pastor didn't tell us nothing. And we missed out. No, you just said, well, forget the pastor. I'm going to go. Yeah. Sister Shaw showed up and she brought Richard. And, yeah. Yeah. and and we don't have to babysit Sister Shaw, Brother Richard. Did they just entertain? They hung around with us. And she wouldn't ride the go-cards, but that's okay. Sister Debbie rode the go-cards. I mean, I didn't realize go-karts could go that slow. But, I mean, she... <laughs> She broke the record for the slowest go-kart trip around the, the tunnel over there. We had a blast, amen. We had a wonderful time. And I want to say thank you for Brother Angelo and Sister Carol, my wife, making it happen. Sister uh, Nancy, the Chavez. 
But the, the Israelites, we all know the story. They were enslaved and they kept praying, Lord, deliver us. And so finally God sent them Moses. So they go out and, and they leave Egypt. And, and that was known as Passover. Why? Because they took the little lamb and they killed it. And they took the blood and the death angel came at night. And if you saw the blood, it would just pass over. But if there was no blood, the firstborn of that house would die that night. There was a lot of crying that night, including Pharaoh's son was taken out that night. Pharaoh just had a hard time believing in the God of Israel. The God of Israel is a real God, saints of God. He don't play. I, I was telling the, the, the saints this morning at breakfast that our God doesn't ask you questions. He just tells you. His word is full of commandments, not suggestions or what do you think? God is not a Democrat. He's not looking for your vote. A lot of pastors, all you got to all you got to do is accept the Lord. Where do you find that you have to accept the Lord? Are you kidding me? More important that God accepts you. You're the one that's lost. God has never changed. God is the same yesterday, today and forever. I needed him to accept me. And God said, I can accept you if you get born again of the water and of the spirit. And I'm glad I've been born again of the water and of the spirit. I'm glad my salvation is not in my head, Brother Raymar. Not just, well, just believe and you're saved. No, I ain't going to trust my brain. I can't hardly trust my brain to even drive and, and talk on the phone at the same time. And, and I've told you that story. I left work. And I was late, so I was calling my wife at the bank, said, honey, I'm running just a little bit late, and, but I, I'm on my way, okay? And then I realized I crossed over Lake Trafford Road without stopping, without looking. And Lake Trafford is very busy. I'm like, I got to go, hon. Click. That was the last time I tried to drive. I don't see how women do. They talk on the phone, put their eyeshadow on and all this lipstick, and they're driving crazy. I, I don't know how they do it. I can't do that. So I'm not going to trust my mind. That I'm smart enough that all I have to do is believe and I'm saved. I would rather go to the word of the Lord. And if the word of the Lord says you must be born again of the water and of the spirit. I want to be born again. I'm glad I'm born again. Which one of your children? ¿Cuál es el mayor de la familia? Él es el mayor. En ese día en... en en Egipto iba a pasar al ángel de muerte, iba a pasar sobre la gente y ya tenían el mandamiento que mataran un cordero y que agarraran la sangre de ese cordero y la, la pusieran en la puerta a cruzar y para abajo. Y cuando venía el ángel esa noche, los que no tuvieran fe en la palabra no lo hicieron, pero los que creyeron en la palabra lo hicieron, mataron el cordero el mandamiento es que mataran, mataran, mataran un cordero limpio, sin, sin mancha, y que agarraran la sangre de ese cordero y la pusieran en, en la puerta y en el lado, y que se comieran todo el cordero, todo entero. Y si la familia estaba muy pequeña, invitar a, 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 al vecino que viniera, pero la cosa es que se tenían que comer todo el, todo el cordero. ¿Qué quiere decir eso, hermanos? Que la palabra del Señor tiene uno que comerla toda, toda. Si está en la palabra, yo lo quiero para mí. Porque cuando pasó el ángel esa tarde, esa noche, pasó, estaba triste, las madres llorando porque los que no creyeron no, no pusieron la sangre. Quiere decir que si la familia de ustedes no había creído en, en la palabra y no había hecho el mandamiento, el ángel se pasaba por la casa y el muchacho ese que está ahí no amanecía en la mañana, ya murió en la noche. Aún el, rey, el faraón de ese día que estaba de rey allí, el hijo de él también murió. So that, that was a, the, the Passover. Amen. And so Egypt was a, a type of sin. And Egypt was left behind. And so there was a lot of people that came out of Egypt But there was a lot of people that Egypt didn't come out of them. And they began to murmur and they began to complain. They began to find fault with Moses, the man of God. All these things that God had done for them and they were ungrateful. They were saints of God. One thing that I, I know for a fact, I know a lot of things that I don't know about God. 
But I know one thing that God does not like murmuring and complaining. You know why? Because if you murmur and complain about what's going on in your life, it's because you don't trust that he's in control. It's going to be some bad days. Jesus said in this life, you will have tribulations. You know why? Because we're not in heaven. We're on an earth that is very sinful and in a world that has been contaminated by Lucifer himself. Don't expect heaven to be in this world. I'm not looking for heaven on earth. I'm looking for heaven in the heavenlies. So the people on Passover grabbed their stuff and, and went. 50 days later, God gave Moses the law, the Torah. And so time went by. Hundreds of years went by. And, and then one day, John looked and he saw his cousin, Jesus. And he pointed at him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Not only is he going to deliver us from our bondage in this world, but he's going to, he's going to set us free from the bondage of sin. Because, you know, they left Egypt, but Egypt was still in their heart. Egypt was still eating that. Eating on the inside. Could we not have found graves? Was there not graves in Egypt? Why did you bring us out here to die? And we, if I would have been there, it says, sir, we're not going to die. The same God that took us out of Egypt is, is able to take us across. He's going to feed us. He's going to give us water. But they doubted and they murmured and complained. And one day the ground opened up and it ate up. A bunch of the people... Sons of Korah and those that were murmuring and complaining. But the type of the day of Pentecost, the Lamb of God was crucified. Jesus was crucified on Passover. Remember, he said, find us a place to celebrate the Passover. Crucifixion was just around the corner. So Jesus was crucified signifying that he is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. And then 50 days later, oh, 50 days later, Jesus told him before he ascended into heaven, says, I want you to go to Jerusalem and I want you to tarry there until you be endued with power from on high. They had just asked him, Lord, when will these things be? And what will be the signs of thy coming and of the end of the world? See, the world is coming to an end. Even the apostles knew that. When is this going to be? And Jesus answers him, answered them. He said, the Father has placed them in his power. Where did he put it? He put it in the power of God. But he turns around right away and he says, but ye shall receive what? Power. In other words, you're not the children of darkness. In other words, you, you, God is going, when, he, when he gives you the Holy Ghost, that Torah, the law of the Old Testament, see, there's two celebrations there on the day of Pentecost. The, 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 they celebrated the day of the Feast of Weeks, which is a celebration of the harvest. And the way they would celebrate that, Brother Raymar, they would bring two loaves of bread. And I don't know what other pastors are preaching about the two loaves of bread. <laughs> and I don't care. This is what I feel like it meant. And I might be 100% in, agree in agreement with them because I believe that the Holy Ghost is sharing with us tonight something beautiful. What are the two loaves? I believe that is the Old Testament and the New Testament. I'm not just saved according to the New Testament. My New Testament agrees with the Old Testament. The New Testament is the Old Testament fulfilled. This was full of types and shadows. This was the real thing. And you and I are born again of the water and of the spirit. We are the product. Somebody said, the Holy Ghost is not for you. They started saying that, Brother Freddy, uh, way back in the early 1900s. They said the Holy Ghost was just for the Apostles, but regardless of what they thought, 
There was a former rain, which was the day of Pentecost. And God said there's going to be a latter rain. There was two harvest seasons in Israel. A type of the former rain when the, the Holy Ghost fell on the day of Pentecost. In the early 1900s, somebody got so hungry for God and says, you think the Holy Ghost is for us? And they said, well, let's go home and pray and fast and study, and then we'll come back. And when they came back, what did you guys find in the Word? As college students, they said, we never found any place in the Bible that the Holy Ghost was ever stopped. And we found out that the, the only sign of the Holy Ghost was the speaking in tongues. These have received the Holy Ghost same as us, for we heard them speaking in other tongues. And that became the sign. And they said, you think the Holy Ghost for us? And they said, we believe that it could happen. And a little girl, they all knelt down to pray, God, if the Holy Ghost is for us, fill us with the Holy Ghost. And a little girl immediately began to speak in a heavenly language. From there, the fire broke loose and it went all over the world. Today, people are still receiving the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in another language, in another tongue, and there's still those that no, it ain't for us. I guarantee that the same people that are saying the Holy Ghost is not for us, if you were to tell them that Elon Musk has got $1,000 for everybody in Immokalee, if you just go over to the Catholic Church or somewhere, man, everybody line up. But you're telling them that something even greater than a thousand dollars, greater than a million dollars, all the money that Elon Musk has, and all the, the the George Soros. You put it all together, you cannot ever make a ship that would take away my sins from me. But yet, in this Holy Ghost that God has given us, that is called the gift of the Holy Ghost, is the law. Is the commandments. It's all the promises in God. Is the word of God embedded in my spirit. In my soul working within me. It's all in him. Jesus said I'm not going to. Verse number 18 of John chapter 14. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And he said yet a little while. And the world seeth me no more. The world. Are we the world? <laughs> we're in the world, but we're not of the world. But ye, the Bible says, but ye see me because I live. Ye shall live also. In other words, he said, I'm going away, but I'm going to send the comforter. He didn't abandon us, saints of God. How many of you are glad you got the comforter inside of you? It's the earnest of our inheritance. It is the thing that keeps me going. I have not ever seen heaven yet, but I got this Holy Ghost in me that has got revelation in it. That's another thing that God gave us with the Holy Ghost. Revelation. The ability to see. He said the world cannot see. Why? Because they don't have revelation. Unless you're born again of the water and of the Spirit, you cannot see. And I challenge anyone that cannot see and make sense of the Word of God, get the Holy Ghost. Get the Holy Ghost. Your eyes will be open. Be baptized in Jesus' name. Sin will be washed. And you'll begin to see what all the commotion is about. You will become a Pentecostal. He says, they can't see me, but you can. And I can't see him with my natural eyes, but in my spiritual eye, God is here today. I can feel his presence in the house. There's a man by the name of Steve Jobs. He, I think he was the maker, inventor, creator of Microsoft, if I'm not mistaken. And I don't want to blotch up his story, but I was listening to him give his story the other day when, uh, when he was about ready to be born to an unwed woman. She decided to give him away for adoption, and they found a couple that wanted him. But there was a stipulation with a woman that was going to birth him. She said, I, I will allow my son to be adopted, but only to a couple that is college graduated. The people that are going to adopt my baby will have to be college graduates. And so the day came, they found, I think it was two lawyers, a man and a woman. At least one of them was a lawyer that I know according to what I can remember, they decided to adopt Steve Jobs. And uh, 
the day came, baby was born, the couple walked in and they looked at the baby and they said, well, we wanted a girl. And so they walked out, they didn't want the baby. And so they started looking and they found another couple and they said, we want the baby. And they said, well, you're not college graduates. So we cannot allow this because the mother's wishes is that you would be college graduates. So they left brokenhearted. Again, people that try to adopt children sometimes have their hearts broken because it just, just doesn't happen like that where they just give you babies. There's a lot of things that you have to go through. But eventually the mother realized, you know, these people want my son really bad. What if they promise me that they will make sure that my baby has a college degree that sent him to college and Steve Jobs telling the story how they wrote a contract saying that they promised that they would send him to college. So they raised this boy and sent him off to college. He stayed in college for a little while and realized that college was not for him. So he dropped out, but he went into his garage, him and a friend and they began to, Piddle around with back then what we called computers, very simple. A lot of us don't even remember those computers, Macintosh. And, and so they began there in their garage. Before long, he was a multimillionaire, Microsoft going everywhere, all over the world, him making millions of dollars. And they found out that he had cancer. And so he was faced with death. And he said that was the weirdest thing because he had never thought about dying. But when he was faced with death, it did something to him. Realizing, you know, my life is going to eventually be over. He was able to, to fight cancer and he got well again. And he went back to work and then his company that he had built out of his garage fired him. And he became disillusioned. You know, how can my company fire me? But the same people that he had put in charge of his company now had more authority than him and they fired him. And so he began to think, what am I going to do? But then he realized in his head, when I do what I really love doing, I'm successful. Right. This is what I love to do. So before I die, I'm going to build something else. And he began to build and build and to make more money and, and become more famous. And he had a tons of money. But at the end, he passed away. He was born three years after I was born. And he's dead and gone. He died October 5th of 2011. With a lot of money, a lot of notoriety. A lot of things under his belt, but he died. And he said it was death that taught him how to live. And he's talking to college students and he's saying, don't waste your time. Use it because it will run out. Saints of God, where are you going? Where are you, where are you going? I, I know this is an old adage or a, an old saying that, I heard a long time ago, it says, you only have two things to worry about. Are you going to be sick or are you going to be well? If you're well, well, you don't have nothing to worry about. And this guy was trying to break it down so that you can realize that really there's nothing to worry about. It says, so if you're, if you're well, well, then you don't have nothing to worry about. If you're sick, then you've got two things to worry about. Are you going to get better or are you going to die? He said, if you get better... Well, you don't have nothing to worry about. But if you die, then you got two things to worry about. Are you going to heaven or are you going to hell? Right. And then he concluded the saying by saying, well, if you go to heaven, then you don't have nothing to worry about. And he said, if you go to hell, you don't have nothing to worry about because you're going to be there with all your friends. And I begin to think, that's a simple little saying, right? But who you hang out with, your friends, and the crowd that, that you are pulled by, 
If you're constantly being pulled out by people that like to drink, and, and you young people listen to me, I know that you can understand what I'm saying. Little Angelo, as you begin to go into life, the people that you hang out with are going to have such an influence. And if they're not on their way to heaven, guess what? They're going to pull at you. There's going to be a, a drawing. So somewhere along in life, while you're still young, you need to answer the question, where am I going? Where do these railroad tracks end? Is it going to be in heaven or is it going to be in hell? This is a choice that only you can make. I make my own calling and election short, but I can't make that up for you or you or anybody else. But I am going to preach tonight and I'm going to preach every Sunday night. You need to get ready because you are going somewhere. Someday you are going somewhere. I want to go to heaven. When I get to heaven, I will have nothing to worry about. But I'm telling you what, sin can never enter into heaven. So what are we going to do? We're all infected with sin, right? Since Adam and Eve, our fathers, our forefathers and our, our, and our mother, they got infected with sin. And it, they pass it on generation after generation. I was born in sin and shaped in iniquity, David said. So what am I going to do? I'm glad for the word of God. Amen. Thankful for the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. How do I get that? How do I get that gift? By just thinking that I got the gift? No, I want to get it just like the apostles got it. Just like the apostles said. You got to be born again of the water and of the spirit. Not a sprinkling. You don't want somebody to just sprinkle you. When you die, you don't want somebody to drop you on, drop you on the edge of the, of, of, the, of the road there in the ditch and just sprinkle a little bit of dirt on you. You want somebody to dig a hole. Put you in there in a casket. Put some little flowers and, and cover you up. And that, that's a proper burial. I'm telling you what spiritually is more important. You need to come to an altar and make sure there is a, a hole that is deep. That all your sins are going to go down into. And then you need to be buried in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins. Die out to your will. Say not my will, O oh God, but thine be done. The saddest people on the planet today are people that are selfish. They want their way in everything. They want you to say what they want you to say. You can be looking at a woman and she says, no, I'm a man. And they want you to refer to her as sir. Or you might be looking at a sir and she wants to be called a ma'am. And you're like, what? I, I see a man. Well, don't call me a man. I'm a ma'am. Saints of God, these are not people that are crazy. These are people that are possessed. The deceiver, the liar, the Bible says he is a liar from the very beginning, has lied to them, and they want you to buy into the lie. I can't buy into the lie. Why? Because I've got the light of the word. God is the one that made me a man, and, and he gave me a woman. And that's what we are, and that's what we're going to die at. Now, if they want to be called or whatever they want to do over there in the world, that the church is not here to judge anybody. But I am saying today that if somehow a spirit has gotten to you, that you're a woman and you think you're a man, we can cast that spirit out in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God can set you free and you can be born again of the water and of the spirit. I, I'm, I'm closing. I know I'm preaching a lot. But I was listening to the Sunday school this morning. And we've got two young men that come out of this church. Well, one of them is still with us. But God is, going to, God is going to do something with Brother Angelo's ministry. Already doing something. They went to a conference uh, Friday or Saturday. And, and they had both of them come to the front. And they anointed him and spoke. What I've been telling you about. When you prophesy over somebody, it's not, oh, you're going to get a trailer full of money. Or tomorrow they're, they're going to bring you a car to your driveway and all this kind of stuff. It's fortune telling. It's got nothing to do with the spiritual things. God told Peter, says, you are so carnally minded. He called him, get thee behind me, Satan. That's not prophesying, but they prophesied. You know what? They prophesied revival in their lives. 
God is going to bring revival in your lives. These are spiritual things that God wants the church to be in, in, infiltrated by the spirit that God has given us in the Holy Ghost. There's another. We can, Brother Raymar, we could be here all night telling you what all God has given us when he gave us that little gift, the package of the Holy Ghost, the gifts of the spirit. They're all in there. Healing is in there. <laughs> healing not only of the body, but healing of your mind. The things that plague you, the things that hurt you in the past, God can just take and wash them off. And you can begin to shout, I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. I've been adopted into the family of God, and I, I lost where I was. But let's stand then. Let's stand. I remember now, as I listened to the Sunday school this morning, two young men, young in the ministry, but not ashamed. Right. And they kept talking. I'm like, oh, man, you guys. Anybody could be listening. The Baptist could be listening. The Methodist. The Catholic people might be listening to y'all. You got a lot of relatives that are Catholics. What are you doing? But they kept talking about the Holy Ghost. Yeah. The Holy Ghost will change you. The Holy Ghost can give you hope. The Holy. And I'm like, man, there's just two guys that are not ashamed of the Holy Ghost. It is the power of God, amen, that is in us. It's Christ in you. Is that counselor that will take us from here to where we got to go. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. He didn't abandon us just because he went to heaven. He said, I'm going to send you the comforter. Comforters in the house. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We got to know where we're going. We've got to know now. We can't wait till the trumpet sounds. Well, I thought I was on my way to heaven. No, there is a way we can know for sure to be born again of the water and of the spirit. Be baptized in Jesus' name, for there is no other name given among men by the which we must be saved. That's in the Bible. And you shall receive power after, the, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. All these things are for the church, Lord, and you have given it to us in the gift of the Holy Ghost. Let us not reject your gift, but let us up, hold it as close as we can until the hour comes. I pray for every saint in the house. I pray for anybody that's doing battle right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus, there's power in the blood. Oh, Rabasi, Rabakasanda. Oh, Lord, you didn't give us the Holy Ghost to play with, but you gave us the Holy Ghost to have power with. And we take authority in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Bring us back at the appointed time. And everybody said amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Anybody that wants to help with this uh, lady, she's uh, she's in this shelter here in Immokalee, and uh, uh, she she's got till the eighth, and then she will be her time will run out. It's not an eviction, but you can't stay there more than a certain amount of time. I've never met her, but she says she's got a baby and she needs help till the uh, from the 8th till the 16th, a place for her and the baby till at that time she will get her food stamps and all of that in order. So if you want to give something, uh, I'm going to give, if it's okay with the board, I'm going to give $200 from the church. We're not taping anymore, are we, brother? We're not on, on video anymore. So I, I'm going I'm going to give two hundred dollars from the church, and then I just went in and took a, a cabinet for a teacher to her house. She gave me a hundred dollars. I'm going to give that, and I hope this is not being.